Welcome to Atlas Sova. And today we're looking at the second largest city in every country in Europe. Now, before we dive in, two questions immediately pop to mind. First, what is a city? And second, which countries count as Europe? Let's start with the first one. Cities are often vague. Do we count only what's inside the medieval city walls or do we count until the last house before we reach the forest? For this series, we've looked at the official administrative division of cities. This often makes cities a lot smaller than you might think because we don't count the whole metropolitan area. For example, Milan as a proper city has around 1.4 million residents, while the whole metropolis counts roughly 4 million people. Second, which countries are in Europe? The first countries are easy, all the member states of the European Union. That's 27 in total. Add a hint of Balkans, a pinch of UK, Norway, Iceland and Switzerland. Mix that with our eastern friends of Belarus, Ukraine, Moldova, the Caucasian countries of Georgia, Armenia and Azerbaijan, and yes, Russia. Because, spoiler alert, the second biggest city lies in Europe. And last but not least, our secret ingredient of the cute micronations of Andorra, Monaco, Liechtenstein, San Marino and Vatican City. So without further ado, let's get into the second largest city in every European country. First up, we've got an odd one, Vatican City. Vatican City is not just the largest city of the country of the Vatican, it is the country, meaning there is no second city. Besides, it's hard to classify Vatican as a city since most of it is just a giant square and some gardens. The 453 citizens live here in these compounds on the northeastern side. Fun fact, according to the official Vatican website, the country has one pet dog. Continuing to another rather strange one, the country of Monaco. After Vatican City, the second smallest country on earth, with probably the highest density of millionaires and billionaires. It's a very small city-state in the south of France. Now, Monaco is also the name of the city that encompasses the entire country. But this time, the city is actually divided into different wards. The data is a bit sketchy here, but what we found is that La Condamine is the second largest ward. Just 40 people shy of number three. La Condamine is the ward that is directly at the harbor with all the supersized yachts in it. Definitely not a place a simple YouTuber can afford. Third on the list, we come to the first place we can actually somewhat call a city. In fact, not just a city, but the capital of the country of Liechtenstein. Neighboring Shan has a few hundred more residents, but can't call itself the capital of a country that has more companies than people registered in it. Vaduz is a cute town with just under 6,000 residents, one of which is actually the prince of the country, who lives in his castle like a true European monarch. Liechtenstein can be seen as the last remains of the Holy Roman Empire and Vaduz really is the perfect city to prove this. Just like the Holy Roman Empire with its messy borders full of enclaves and exclaves, Vaduz doesn't have just one exclave, no, it has six. Six exclaves for a city the size of a large cruise ship. Moving south, we come to San Marino, a beautiful little country completely surrounded by Italy. San Marino is another country where the capital is not the largest city, but this time it ranks third. The second city is called Borgo Maggiore and is situated on the foot of the majestically cold mountain Monte Titano. Borgo Maggiore functions mostly as a suburb for the capital, called San Marino City, as the main road towards this capital leads through Borgo Maggiore. The town used to be called Mercatale, meaning marketplace, but I guess they wanted a cooler name. The market is still there and is one of the attractions in San Marino, definitely worth a visit. Our next country on the list is our last true micronation, Andorra. Beautifully located between the Pyrenees Mountains and squashed between France and Spain. Andorra has divided its mountainous country up into parishes, seven in total. In 1978, the parish of Escaldes en Gordain was founded and became the second largest in Andorra. Around 14,000 people call this place home. And what a home it is, high up in the mountains of this duty-free nation. 
Further south, we come to the island nation of Malta, where things become a bit vague. The capital city Valletta is actually really small, as it has a population of only around 6,000 people. But the wider metropolitan area of Valletta has around 400,000 residents. Officially, this area is made up by different cities, which are just conglomerated together. Now, Malta required a bit of research, but according to official data given by the Maltese government, the town of Birkirkara comes in as second, with a population of around 24,000 residents. The government itself doesn't seem to know for sure, as they state that it's an estimate. Perhaps they should stop selling so many passports to rich foreigners? Esh sur Alzette, or locally just called Esh, sits right here in the south of Luxembourg, bordering France. For those of you who love shopping, Esh is the place to be. With a length of a whopping 0.6 mile or 1 kilometer, Esh has the longest shopping street in all of Luxembourg. Okay, we know, Luxembourg is not the most exciting country in the world. But Esh also has a miniature railway where you can see grown men sitting in mini trains. If that's not a trip worth to Ash, then what is? And with a population of around 36,000 people, Ash gets a solid second place in the small country of Luxembourg. Next up, our northernmost city on the list. It's Kopavogur in Iceland. Kopavogur literally means seal puppy bay in Icelandic, which just sounds absolutely adoring. In reality, Kopavogur functions mostly as a suburb of capital Reykjavik. But the people of Kopavogur couldn't really deal with being second all their life, so they built the tallest building in all of Iceland. Is that all that Kopavogur is known for? No. Iceland is famous for its folklore and legends, and Kopavogur is the most prominent place for so-called Huldufolk, otherwise known as elves or hidden supernatural beings. If you've seen a Huldu folk, please let us know in the comments. We'd love to know more about this mystical place called Kopavogur. Located in the very heart of Montenegro, we find the town of Nikšić. Nikšić is old, very old. Founded in the 4th or 5th century, the Romans used it as a military camp. Despite being very old, Nikšić has been a bit unfortunate over the last century, as it was bombed during the Second World War. The decades after that, the future seemed bright for Nikšić, as it became the industrial heart of Montenegro. But after the breakup of Yugoslavia in 1992, Nikšić found itself once again on the losing side of history. Political tensions and poverty rose, and Nikšić became the city with the second most suicides out of all cities in former Yugoslavia. Not really a second list we want to make. Luckily, it seems that the people of Nikšić are noticing this problem and have started helping each other out with small community organizations. Next up, the country with the newest name of all the countries in the world. Forget about Macedonia, it's now North Macedonia. And it's Bitola who takes the second spot in this diverse and mountainous nation. For around 500 years, Bitola was under Ottoman rule until they fought the Ottomans in the First Balkan War in 1912. The city still has a lot of buildings from those Ottoman years. Now, Bitola mainly functions as the economic center in the region. And with a population of around 74,000, Bitola is the second largest city in North Macedonia. Daugavpils in Latvia is our first Baltic city. Daugavpils is situated in the southeast of Latvia, near the Russian border and as a result, the majority of the residents are ethnically Russian. Over the course of history, Daugavpils changed country many, many times. From the Grand Duchy of Lithuania in the 16th century on to the Russian Empire, the Soviet Union and since 1991, Latvia. Prior to the Second World War, Daugavpils had a huge Jewish population, making up almost 50% of the residents. After that, not many were left. Nowadays, Daugavpils is mostly known for housing some paintings by the famous Mark Rothko. The abstract expressionist painter was born there. Not everyone will agree that Kosovo is a sovereign country, but right now more than 50% of UN members say that Kosovo is a country, so we will go with that. Prizren comes in as a strong second with around 85,000 residents in the city itself. 
Most people in Prizren are ethnically Albanian, but you can find large communities of Bosniaks, Turks and Roma people. The Turkish community is so prominent that many people in the city are able to speak Turkish. Recently, the city is slowly attracting more tourists, as people are discovering its ancient city center. By many considered the intellectual capital of Estonia, Tartu is our second Baltic city on the list. Besides housing Estonia's best and most prestigious university, it also has the Ministry of Education, the Supreme Court of Estonia and the Estonian National Museum. Sounds a lot like a capital to us. Tartu loves their students so much, they even have a statue of two kissing students. More into culture, Tartu's got you covered. You'll find the oldest and most renowned theater in all of Estonia here. Oh, and in 2024, Tartu will be the European capital of culture. All in all, Tartu seems like a fun-loving city that just pretends to be the capital sometimes. Moving on to Slovenia with Maribor. The city started off as a castle in the 10th century and became a full city in 1254. Throughout history, Maribor has had its fair share of misery. Like in the 17th century when the city was burned down several times while the plague was killing many many people. After that Maribor came under the influence of many different leaders, but deep down they always felt Slovenian. But it wasn't until a secret meeting on the 1st of November in 1918 that it was able to show its true Slovenian love. In that secret meeting, high up generals decided the city should belong to German Austria. But Slovene Major Rudolf Meister did not like that idea to say the least. He organized the Slovenian military and took control of the city. And the rest is history. Now it's the second city in Slovenia. Over in Cyprus we find our first city with over 100,000 residents. Limassol is also the southernmost second largest city in Europe. The city is becoming increasingly popular among tourists as it's been ranked high on various travel lists. Limassol is actually a border city, which sounds surprising since it's on the island nation of Cyprus. But right next to Limassol lies the British exclave of Akratori, which is mostly used as a military base. And because of that base, Limassol is the most important trade center on Cyprus. The combination of tourism and business makes the Limassol port the busiest and largest in Cyprus. Balti is a true number two. Not just in population, but it's also Moldova's second city when it comes to area and economic power. Now, Balci means swamp or puddle in Romanian. So it is thought that the city was built on the wetlands from the river Raut, which flows through the city. The city used to produce a lot of tobacco and had many vineyards, making it a true city of pleasure if you ask us. Nowadays, the city has shifted more to manufacturing the city has a lot of outlet shops, making it a popular place to visit for Moldovans. Next up is Durs in Albania. Here it becomes a bit vague as to how many people live in the city and therefore how high up this list Durs would actually be. The country doesn't have an official classification on their definition of a city, but according to a 2011 census, the municipal unit of Durs had a population of roughly 113,000 people. The city praises itself as the most cultured coastal city in Albania, where different religions live together. Many Italians arrive in Durs for their summer holiday by taking the ferry from Italy, which is only a few hours away. Durs can be seen as a city where old and new come together. You'll find an amphitheater, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and on the seaside you'll find a modern boulevard with lots of restaurants and entertainment. Our first stop in the Caucasus region brings us to Armenia, where we find the city of Gyumri. As the self-proclaimed culture capital, Gyumri is home to many prominent museums, monuments and a famous orchestra. The foundation of the city is thought to date back more than 10,000 years ago. Over the centuries, Gyumri changed names many times and was under the influence of many different rulers, with the Soviet Union being the last one before Armenia became independent in 1991. However, since the fall of the Soviet Union, the population of Gyumri has been in decline. What's more fitting to a country whose name consists of two words, to have a second city whose name also has two words? Welcome to Banja Luka. Known for its beautiful boulevards and lush gardens, Banja Luka comes off as a very green city. Because of the large university, 
Banja Luka is a city full of young students. And as a result, the city has a lot of sports. In 2018, Banja Luka was designated as European City of Sports. Banja Luka is located in the entity of Republika Srpska, and therefore most people are ethnically Serbs in the city. Next, we come to Barisov in Belarus. With a population of around 140,000 people, Barisov is the second city. And yeah, that's about it. Barisov has houses and squares and people in those houses and on those squares. Anyway, let's move on. Oh, Georgia. One could say Batumi is like a second Dubai. With its shiny skyscrapers, luxurious beach resorts and fancy casinos. But the city is not just superficial entertainment. It has a long history. During the peak of the Roman Empire, the city constituted the outer boundaries of the empire. Nowadays, many Georgians come to Batumi to have a fun holiday, relax at the Pebble Beach and go for a swim in the Black Sea. The population has been steadily increasing over the past decades and now around 170,000 people call this place home. Moving on to another beautiful beach city, Split in Croatia. This city has an actual Roman palace which was built in the 4th century and was home to the very last official emperor of the Roman Empire. The city center of Split is included on the UNESCO list of World Heritage Sites. Nowadays Split is known as a beautiful Mediterranean coastal city which attracts a lot of tourists each year. The city is gaining more and more the reputation of being a city of music. Dozens of notable musicians come from Split and yearly the Ultra Europe Electronic Music Festival is held in the city. For its size, Geneva is really punching above its weight. Geneva truly is a global city and can be seen as the international center for diplomacy. This is where the famous Geneva Conventions were signed, which set the foundations for international law and for the humanitarian treatment in war, giving Geneva the nickname Peace Capital. Besides diplomacy, Geneva is also known as a powerful financial center usually ranking in the top 20 of most competitive financial centers in the world. Geneva is steadily ranked as one of the best cities in the world to live, but this comes at a price. The city also shows up in many lists as one of the most expensive cities in the world to live. Over in Hungary we find Debrecen, with a population of just over 200,000. Situated on the Great Hungarian Plain, roughly 20 miles or 30 kilometers from the Romanian border, the city is now known for its university. The University of Debrecen began in 1538 as the Calvinist College, still the predominant religion in the city, and is now the oldest and largest university in Hungary. With around 30,000 students, Debrecen promises to be a lively city. Our Irish friends must have known this list was coming up because due to a boundary expansion Cork went from 125,000 residents to 210,000 residents in 2019. Well played. Technically the city centre is located on an island because the river Lee splits up and comes back together at a point further downstream. Not much further the river meets the ocean creating one of the largest natural harbours worldwide. The people of Cork have some heavy rivalry going on with their big brother Dublin and as a result the Lee siders refer to their city as the true capital of Ireland. We won't really get into that debate. That's it for part 1. Part 2 will be up shortly so make sure to check that out. If you like our videos please subscribe and leave a like, that would really help us. Thanks for now and have a good day, bye bye!